upon a time where uh, my grandmother, if you know anything about my grandmother, she has photo albums everywhere. And she likes to pull them out, and we look at them, and she'll say, do you remember this person, or do you remember that person, or do you remember this time, or I can tell you about this, and I can tell you about that. And I've come to notice as I've grown older, I appreciate that a lot more than I did when I was a lot younger. But now we live in a society where we'll pull up Facebook and go back to memories and things like that. But I begin to think how those times that we look back in the photo albums, how we can learn things to help our life for today. You can learn things that you used to see. And, and somebody, and I, I'm a history nerd, if you want to call it. Amen. I love history. Always loved history. Uh, and some people think I'm crazy about it, but I've always been taught if we don't listen to history, it's going to repeat itself. Um, and, and a lot of times it does. And so I like to look back at before, at family members from before. I'll never forget my, uh, uh, we called him Papa James. He would be my great grandfather. He, he had some old books and um, he, he told me that he fought in, 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 I think it was World War II, I think it was one of those, World War II. And he was telling me about all these memories. And, but I noticed in all the pictures that he showed me, his, his uniform was very clean. And, and there wasn't like battlegrounds or anything like that. It was just like him. And he'll tell me all these stories. And then come to find out after he passed away, he was in the Army. But he never actually went overseas. He just went to Alaska and, and, and uh, trained there. But he, he would teach me things by these old pictures that he would show and I, and I think as Christians, sometimes we need to go back to the beginning to find out who we are. We need to go back in the album to, to those. Uh, I, I love a family tree where you can find out your family tree and, and find out where you came from. But if you follow that family tree, if you keep going father and father, you'll get back to two people, and that is Adam and Eve. And this morning we're going to start... In this, uh, uh, in this series, looking at Adam and Eve, a story that's very familiar to all of us. Genesis 3, verses 1 through 7 says this. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of this tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat it, it your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eye, and the tree desirable to make one wise. She took of the fruit and ate. She also gave it to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covered. When we go back to this, we look at our ancestors, and we look at these people that's examples to each and every one of us. And I know a lot of us like to blame Eve, especially the men, right? We like to blame Eve for enticing us to eat too, right? Because she's the one that fell for it. But I, I look at it as this. We all make a mistake. We all have a choice in our lives. I used to tell the young people when I used to teach the youth, I would tell them, could you imagine going to a buffet? Right? Some of y'all hungry right now, right? You go to a buffet, you have any kind of food that you want, except for one Tootsie Roll. They said if you eat that Tootsie Roll, you got to leave this establishment. You know what a lot of us do, and we think it's crazy, but a lot of us, you know what we go do? Eat the Tootsie Roll. Because we like to have stuff that we were told that we can't have. Amen? We like to have those things. I love what Satan told out Eve. He said, if you eat of this, you will be like God. A lot of us think that we have control over everything that we do, but we forget that God is only God. Amen. God is the only one in control. 
we call to do. And when he does that, guess what he does? He causes us to fall from God. I, I'm not a big fisherman. Some of you are that are here. But you put a worm on the hook so it'll tempt the, the, the fish to bite. Amen. Or you put, I, I'm not even going to try and name the other baits because y'all be done messed all those up. Amen. But you put all those different types of bait on the, on the, on the hook and, and it, it causes the fish to bite. The devil is doing the same thing in our lives. He's causing us to bite on things because it looks good. Because we think we know better for ourselves. And church, if we don't look back in history and see how things were tempted back then, God is still tempting us. Uh, the devil is still tempting us the same way. Amen. That's the reason why we got to learn from the past. This morning... <laughs> I want to look at how temptation works. You see, while Satan tempted Eve, we are led astray by our own lust. James 1, 14 through 15 says this, But each one is tempted when he draws away by his own desires and entices. Then when his desires was conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, which is at full growth, brings forth death. Do you realize that most of the time when we're tempted, it's because of you desire it already? You try to blame it on the devil, but the devil had nothing to do with it. You already desire it. And when you desire it, the devil takes what you desire, amen, and he tries to hook you with it, amen. Because some of us are trying to blame everybody else for us falling into temptation. But we got to realize it starts with the person that you're looking at in the mirror, amen. It starts with the one that, that, that's in your heart. That's the reason why the Bible says, guard your heart. Above all else, guard your heart. Because Satan, the enemy, is going to use what's inside of your heart to tempt you and draw you away from God. we got to get back to that point in our lives. Before the fall, Satan had to approach Eve from without. Since the fall, we, he usually leaves us to our own inward lust. He usually leaves us to our own inward desire. But he came to Eve and tried to get her to eat the fruit. And this morning we want to look at some reasons how temptation works. And the first one is this. Go ahead and go to the next slide. The devil is crafty but not straightforward. Have you ever noticed that? He tried to he don't just tell you what he wants you to do. He, he tries to come to you and, and, and make it crafty and pull you in. Amen. Same way like those, remember those old Hardy's commercials where they had the woman on the car eating a burger? And you're like, what in the world? Because it had nothing to do with the burger. Amen. And because of people's desires, they would go eat a Hardy's burger. Knowing that model has never ate a Hardy's burger in her life. Because if she did, she wouldn't be on top of the car. Amen. And it desires you and it brings you in. He tries to come at you at different ways. He knows your heart. He knows your desires. And he's not going to just straightforward tell you to sin. He's going to try to back you into a corner so you'll fall. Church, that's the reason why we got to know who Satan is. We got to know who God is. We got to know what God wants us to do. If you're not getting into your word, then you don't know what God has called you to. Right. He's crafty but not straightforward. He comes to us. He tries to weave in and out so we'll fall. You see, he came to Eve when she was alone. Some of y'all say, man, I'm better off when I'm by myself. You know what? That's when the devil tries to come at you. Right. You know what the devil wants to do? He wants to divide you. Yes. He wants to get you away from others. Right. And the reason why he wants to get you away from others is because when he gets you away from others, that's when he knows he's got you alone, one-on-one. -on -one. That's when he knows, hey, I can bring, I, I can come, and you don't have nobody else there to back you up. I wish I could take Brother G everywhere I went with me. Because those times I feel depressed, he can get out the bongos, he can get out the tambourine, and he can play, and it's great. You know, that's the reason why I tell people all the time, it's better to do life together than alone. Amen. When you start feeling tempted, call somebody. Amen. When you start feeling like you're falling, call somebody. Well, they won't talk about me. They won't judge me. You know what? I'd rather them judge me, them talk about me, than I go to heaven and God says, I depart from me. 
Amen. I'm sorry, I know we ain't supposed to talk about porn in church, but somebody got to talk about it. The reason why we have issues with, with, with uh, people running around on their wives and their husbands is because they're too alone by themselves thinking of the faults that are there instead of putting their mind on Jesus and following him and understanding without him that, that their relationship will be nothing. You've got to get back to that point, church. We can't be alone. We can't allow the, the, the devil to be crafty. We can't allow him to just come to us. We've got to notice it when he starts. Which leads us to the second point, and that's this. The devil challenges the authority of God's word. I love how he tried to come at Eve. He did not begin by saying, listen, Eve, God is flat out wrong. He didn't say that. Instead, he planted a suggestion in the form of a question. The first question in the whole Bible, and that's this. Is it really true that God said that you couldn't do <laughs> Is it really true? Have you ever noticed before you do something dumb, somebody will ask you a question? Is that really going to happen? Right? That's the first thought in your mindset, right? Is, is, is it really going to happen? Because... When he begins to question things, then we start questioning authority. We have a problem listening to authority in our culture. Amen. Do you realize that everybody that's been put in power is because God has put them in power? Some of you say it's because of a vote. You know what? God has a purpose and a plan for everything that he does. The reason why we have the president, we have the mayor that we have, the, the bosses that we have, because some of us can't even listen to our boss, amen? The pastors that we have, the leaders that we have, is because God put them in that place. And church, if God has put them there, then we should fall under the authority of that person, amen? Amen. amen. we got to get back to that, because see, God says if we can't even listen to our boss, then how are we going to listen to him? Amen? we got to get back to that point that we got to stop questioning authority. He's asking Eve, let's talk about what God has said. There can't be any harm in discussing it. I couldn't find out. If you're discussing it, then you're probably going to fall to it. You know what I'm talking about. When your kids come to you and ask you the question they already know the answer to. Amen. That time where they come and they say, do I really need to do it? Can I really do that? And you say, if you got to ask for it, amen. If you got to ask about it, then you shouldn't be doing it, amen. That's right. Some of you are too busy discussing it. You know the reason why divorce rates going out the roof? It's because you discuss divorce when you get married. Right. You already have it out, amen. Some of us, the reason why we can't stay at a job is because we're already discussing how much we hate it before we ever get it. Amen. We talk about, we already have it. Well, if, if that preacher preaches that today, I'll just go to another church. A amen. Stop discussing it. Go ahead and get rid of it. Stop challenging the word of God. If God said it, God means it. If God means it, then we got to follow it. Amen. Stop trying to discuss and justify yourself out of it. If God is who he says he is, if he is way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, then guess what? We need to follow his word. Amen. Stop challenging the authority of his word, which leads us to the next one. This is how temptation works. The devil questions God's character. He questions God's character. Well, is God really God? I know some of you have been asking that about 2020. We've had viruses, we've had fires, we've had explosions, we had earthquakes, amen. Some of you were woke up to an earthquake this morning that we had, amen. We've had uh, 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 just that we've seen last week a place overseas and it just blow up. We've seen murder hornets, amen. We've seen all kinds of stuff. And you know what our, you know what we begin to do? Because the enemy begins to put these things out here, we begin to question who God is. Well, God's mad at us. Amen. God's not all powerful. God, if why is God letting us go through this? God must not really love me if I'm going through this. Or God is, is, is punishing all of us. Listen, I know a God and, and that's a 
God and just. But a lot of things that we put in our lives is because we put them in our lives. Stop challenging who God is. God is all powerful. Amen. God is who he says he is. And if he is that, then we need to stop questioning his character. Because when we begin to question who he is, then we begin to fall for things that are not who they're supposed to be. Amen. That's the reason why you feel so bad. After the next morning. Amen. Amen. Don't act like you know. I know people that are up all night <coughs> drinking or doing this and doing that, and then the next morning they have to cover it up with another drink or doing this and doing that because they feel bad for what they did the night before. Because you're questioning what God has for you. You're questioning, hey, if this is good enough. Listen, those things that you think are good enough are not good enough, but God is. Stop questioning his character, which leads us to the next one. And that's this. The devil disagrees with God's judgment. You won't surely die. That's what he said. He, he wouldn't create you to kill you. Right? I know what's like, <clears throat> well, if I just watch this one show, then it's going to be okay. It surely <laughs> won't hurt my marriage. Amen. If I go out with this one person, even though I'm married to this other person, it won't hurt it. If I say this one word, oh, I like you ain't never questioned it before you said it. Amen. Because you know after you say it, what's going to happen. Amen. The reason why is because we disagree with the judgment of God. God told them, if you eat of this fruit, you will surely die. And I know what you're thinking. They didn't have a physical death. No, but they had a spiritual death. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, we see it. Because as soon as it happened, their eyes opened. And they began to be so disgusted with themselves. <clears throat> and they were naked at the whole time. But they began to be so disgusted with themselves. They began to hide and cover themselves up. Because they realized that they had failed. And they have been in spiritual death in their life. Listen, there is a hell, right? Amen. We believe that there is a hell. And we believe if you're not saved and living for God, then guess what? You will go to hell. Stop questioning that judgment. Amen. I like how we believe God for the good things, right? Well, he did say he was a provider. He won't let me go without, but he won't send me to hell. He did say, amen, that he loved all of us, amen. But, yeah, he loved all of us, but that don't mean all of us going to be saved, amen. Right. That's right. we got to stop disagreeing with God's judgment, which leads us to the next one. And that's this. The devil promises pleasure, but doesn't mention the pain. That's right. That's right. Have you ever, it felt good at the moment, but then afterwards, Amen. Have you ever done something? That, listen, I, I, I think I've told this story before. Um, I was playing a joke on my father, and he, I went to him, and I had a bubble gum machine that my grandmother had bought me, and I asked him if he wanted bubble gum. And he said, yeah. So I went back, and I was playing a joke on him. Instead of bubble gum, I got marbles. And I took the marbles to him, and I handed it to him, and he thought it was going to be bubble gum. And I thought, hey, this is going to be a pleasure. We're all going to laugh. Everything's going to be good. He threw the marbles in his mouth. And he bit down on them. Have you ever bit down on marbles thinking it's bubble gum? Amen. Listen, I thought there was pleasure until I felt the pain very quickly. <laughs> there was pleasure there for one second. And then there was a lot of pain afterwards. The devil does the same thing. He entices you. He brings you. He tries to get you closer and closer and closer. And at the time, it feels good. It looks good. It seems good. But afterwards, there's pain that comes. I tell people all the time, for every decision you make, there's a consequence. Either a good consequence or a bad consequence. But because of the decision that you make, there's going to be a consequence behind it. Right. Right. When I sub, I go in and I tell a lot of my kids, listen, 
Today's either going to be a good day or a bad day. Amen. But it's up to you to make it that day. And I said, if you don't, guess what's going to happen? There's going to be a consequence that goes with it. Amen. If you wake up on time and go to work, guess what? You'll probably get paid. Amen. But if you're late to work, you might lose your job. Amen. If you're studying for a test, then you're probably going to do decent on it. But if you don't study on it and you try to wing it, then guess what? Don't expect an A because guess what? You made the choice. Amen. All right. All right. Whatever choice you make, it might feel good for this moment, but we're not just living for this moment. Stop living your best life now. Amen. And start understanding your best life is coming. Amen. So stop making a decision to think that your best life is right now. If I just do this, I'll make more money. If I just do this, I'll have a better relationship. If I just do this, no, God says just rely on me. Hold on to me. Because listen, if the boat's going down, as long as God's on the boat, it will not sink. Amen. And we need to understand that, listen, it might feel bad today. But in the future, there will be a reward. Amen. Yes. There'll be a reward. We need to understand that this morning. So I want to give you a quick strategy of how to deal with temptation. Here you go. Here's the first one. Acknowledge the authority of God's word. Listen, I love Genesis because it says this, that God spoke it into creation. He said, let there be light, and guess what? Boom, there was light. He said, let there be animals, and boom, there was animals. He said, let there be this, let there be that. And you know what's so funny? He is so powerful there, but then Eve don't take him for his word. Just a couple of chapters later. Why is that? Because we need to acknowledge how powerful God's word, God's word is. We need to acknowledge how powerful he is. Which leads us to the second one, how we can defeat temptation. We must acknowledge God's character. Not only acknowledge his word, but acknowledge his character. Acknowledge that he loves you. That, that he sends good things from above. Acknowledge that he is a just God. Acknowledge that he is a powerful God. Acknowledge that he is the I am. Acknowledge that he is Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. The end. Acknowledge who he is. The problem is this. If you don't know him, you can't acknowledge him. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. If you don't know me, if you never had a conversation with me, you don't know what my character is. Amen. You're just going off with somebody else's word. A lot of us are just going off with somebody else's word about how good God is. Amen. But you never experienced it because you never had a relationship with him. You got to acknowledge his character. Which leads us to the next one. We got to acknowledge the reality of God's judgment. If God says that we'll die, guess what? We'll die. I think about Lot in the Bible. He says, don't look back. Don't look back. Guess what his wife did? She looked back. And guess what? Because she looked back, because she made that decision, there was judgment from that decision. Some of you say, well, he ain't going to do that to me. You better acknowledge the reality of his judgment. You better acknowledge it. Which leads us to the next one. We must remember that sin gives pleasure or results in pain. Sin gives pleasure or results in pain. When I was two years old, as many of you know, I love superheroes. So when I was two years old, I was staying at my grandparents' house. And I thought I could fly. So I jumped off my porch, and I thought I could fly, and I flew for like two seconds. Brother G, I was doing good. I didn't have a cake, and I was flying for like two seconds, and then I dropped. And when I dropped, I fell on my arm. Yes. There was pleasure in me flying through the air, but there was pain when I hit the ground. Because a lot of us need to understand that sin might get pleasure, but it gets pain. I guess. I 
are the people that says, the reason why I sleep with this person or that person is because it brings pleasure. But then afterwards, there's pain. Amen. I heard somebody asked me the other day, why, why, why do we teach, why do we preach that we shouldn't have sex before marriage? And I, and, and I love it. Somebody brought this out example. It's like gluing two pieces of paper together. <clears throat> and when you glue those two pieces of paper together, when, when, they're, when they're having a relationship, when they're, when they're in that relationship mode and you glue those two pieces of paper, you know what happens when you try to pull them apart? It takes a little bit from each side. And there's people out here going around and they're having sex with this person, sex with that person, and it's pleasure right there and right there, but they don't last. So when you begin to pull it apart, it begins to take a little piece here and a little piece there and a little piece here, and then you get into a relationship and you wonder why you can't give all your all to somebody that you love. And the reason why is because you have been broken apart. Because it might have pleasure but knowledge pain. Church, we got to get back to the point where we understand that sin might feel good for a moment. Amen. But there is pain afterwards. Had it Eve. Had it perfect. Man, I love it. They were in the garden. They had anything they wanted to eat. Except for one tree. They spent time with God. There was perfection, unity, all these things was in the garden. And guess what happens? Because we begin to forget who God is. We begin to challenge His word. We begin to challenge His character. We begin to challenge His authority. Guess what we begin to do? We begin to fall. Now I want to let you know this. Because I could easily stop right there and make you feel bad about yourself. But listen, everybody does it. Everybody has been tempted. The Bible says we've all fallen short of the glory of God. But the great thing about our God is in Genesis they didn't have this. But in Mark we did. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John we did. Because the Bible says that God understood that we needed a Savior. That we needed somebody to come to this earth and to save us. To be a sinless, a perfect Lamb of God that came to this earth and gave His life. So now when we're tempted, when we fall, when we make mistakes, guess what happens? Then God says, come to me, all that are weary and we can lay it. Guess what? I will give you rest. Amen. He says, call upon me and you shall be saved. He says, repent and turn your face towards me and you will have everlasting life. And church, God has brought Jesus so that when we do fall under temptation, we can be changed. That doesn't give us an excuse to keep falling. But it does give us somebody to pay our debt. I'm asking you this morning to come to Jesus. Know Him so you can know these things, so you can fight the temptations in your life. Know who He is.